David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. I mentioned this in my recent DC recap video, but one of my favorite things to do at a show is to make new discoveries. Uh, the pen I'm going to talk about today was one of those pleasant discoveries for me, which is the Shown Design Pocket 6. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this unique new pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for, show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, when you're at a show and there's a really hot table, word travels around fast. Um, I was talking with a friend while at the DC show and they happened to show me their shown design fountain pen that they had just purchased. Uh, right away, I knew I had to have one. I uh, headed over to the uh, shown design table, which I had probably walked past 10 times without noticing. Uh, there, I actually met the gentleman behind the brand, Ian Schoen. Um, he's based out of Philadelphia, where he has a workshop and creates all of his own pen designs himself. Uh, he even makes very cool watches. Um, I was aware of Shown Design. I had seen Ian's pens at last year's DC show, but to date he was really much more known for producing an innovative ballpoint pen, which utilizes the Fisher Space Pen refill. Um, it looked nice, and it was getting lots of great attention on social media, but it just wasn't my thing. That's okay. Not everything is for everybody. Uh, but this new offering was a fountain pen, and that piqued my interest. Interest. Uh, I had a real nice conversation with Ian and he has an evident passion for the creation process and has created a very cool little fountain pen. Uh, the hardest decision about purchasing this pen was deciding on which of the interesting designs to pick up. At his table there were several that I cared for and which one did I purchase? It would be this beauty right here. Uh, this is the Shown Design Pocket 6. Now, you can see this is a rather small pen. I'll show some size comparisons to other pens later, but in comparison to an everyday object, uh, it's about the same, same size as a deck of playing cards, which is pretty small for a pen. Uh, but as you'll see in a little bit, this small pen packs quite the large punch. Uh, just as a side note, uh, that uh, I have a lot of playing cards because one of my other hobbies is magic. I like to learn and, uh, and perform magic. And there was about three years ago, I actually did a trick in front of one of my reviews as an intro. Uh, and it didn't get a lot of reaction, and so I have a feeling that people didn't necessarily care for magic tricks incorporated with their uh, pen reviews. But just for fun, at the end of this video, I will actually uh, uh, post that, uh, that magic trick again and your eyes are not deceiving you uh, even though it was three years ago I happen to be wearing this very same uh, golf shirt so uh, at the end of the video stay tuned for that and uh, and you can see that trick again uh, this pen is made from an anodized aluminum and while the material used is rather thin I've found it to be sturdy and have an appropriate weight what I mean by that is it's not overly heavy but for the size I wouldn't describe it as too light uh, let's start by taking a look at the cap. Uh, the end of the cap is rounded and the barrel is straight. Uh, there is no cap band or branding on this pen at all, which is fine. Uh, I'm not sure actually where you would put it uh, if it were to be included. I, I guess you could engrave something, but the aluminum on the cap and barrel is rather thin, and so I'm thinking you wouldn't want to make it thinner with any engraving. Uh, this pen is clipless uh, with the current design of this pen and a special surprise that you'll see here in just a minute uh, a clip is pretty much not feasible uh, which isn't a big deal uh, in my use of this pen I really prefer to carry it in my pocket uh, in fact like the small pocket and a pair of jeans is a perfect place for this pen uh, there is a rounded groove in the barrel to basically visually offset the transition between the cap and the barrel. Um, I really do like the equidistant grooves. Uh, in my opinion, just having a single cap transition would have made the pen look a little unbalanced. So I, I feel this was a good design choice. Uh, the barrel is also straight. And then you have the posting threads at the end of the barrel, uh, which, are, which are flat uh, with angled sides, which I feel helps ease the posting of this pen as opposed to an end that is more squared off at a 90 degree angle. 
the cap unscrews and there is an o-ring in the cap that you can sense while capping and uncapping this pen uh, the o-ring actually creates a seal so if ink should ever seep into the cap while it's capped it won't leak out of the pen uh, i've been using this pen for a couple of weeks and today i actually rinsed out the cap to see if there had been any ink splatter in there at all and there was none which was nice but once you unscrew the cap, you'll discover the biggest surprise of this pen is which it utilizes a number six stainless steel Bach nib, hence the name Pocket 6. Uh, the Pocket 6 is available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. And then here's a look at the plastic feed. Uh, you know, it's almost as if a nib of this size shouldn't fit in here, but it does. Uh, in comparison, uh, here it is next to a number two nib found on a Quebeco Skyline Sport. Uh, the Quebeco is actually a larger pen than the Pocket 6, but you can see that there's a significant difference in the nib size. Uh, the nib is actually set back into the section a small distance, about a millimeter or so, which I believe was a necessity in order to get this nib to fit inside this cap. Uh, the section is concave. Uh, I purchased this model with a brass section. Uh, it is also available with aluminum sections with our, which are either silver or black. Uh, the brass section will patina over time, adding some character to this, to this pen. Uh, in the two weeks since I've had this pen, uh, it's already begun to change colors a bit. Um, the brass is a little heavier than the aluminum sections, but I don't feel that it front weights the pen at all. Now, typically to use this pen, you twist the cap to post it, um, which extends this pen to a comfortable length, comparable to many other full-size pens on the market. Uh, however, I have found that if I really need to take a quick note and I don't feel like posting the pen, I find that I can kind of jam the end of the barrel up into my hand and it's fairly comfortable. Now, if you're writing anything more than just a few words, then you'll want to post this pen, which is pretty painless. But I like that uh, the posting threads are not very deep. They're very subtle. So even when you don't post it, they do look still kind of cool. Um, it only takes a single rotation to post the cap, and I haven't experienced any issues with cross-threading whatsoever. Uh, on another side note, uh, I have a coworker who uses a Twisby Diamond 580, and she brought the pen to me this week saying that the cap wouldn't stay on. So I took a look at it, and both the cap and the barrel threads were destroyed. Uh, I guess the pen had cross-threaded, and she forced it in anyways, and it damaged the threads. And then over time, she did it again and again until there was barely anything left. So that pen is basically toast. Sad to see, but now she's in the market for a new pen. Uh, as you can imagine, this is a cartridge-only pen. Uh, it accepts standard international cartridges. Um, you can see here there's really barely, let me get it to where you only have the barrel. Uh, there is barely enough room in here for the cartridge. Uh, but what you can do is you can store a cartridge in here without piercing it, which is nice. Uh, Ian has said that he's toyed around with some designs which are large enough to accommodate a converter, but that would be a design possibility a ways down the road. The Shown Design Pocket 6 will retail between $114 and $144, depending on the combination of materials you choose. Uh, it will go on sale in limited qualities on the Shown Design website on August 20th. I predict that the current limited inventory of these pens will sell out quickly. Um, after this current batch is gone, Ian is going to be releasing pens in batches for a while, with the goal of having constant inventory sometime later next year. Um, I actually misspoke in my DC recap video. I mentioned that Ian was going to have these pens available to purchase at the San Francisco show, and that was incorrect. Uh, he will not be at that show. If you want to pick up one of these pens, the place to do it will be on the Shown Design website on the 20th. Um, it'll be available in a variety of colors. Uh, Ian was nice enough to provide some pictures here of some of the different colors that will be available. Uh, he's starting off with a nice variety here, and there are three or four of these models that I'm really liking a great deal. Uh, this is a pen that I would highly recommend. Uh, I purchased it at full price 
for myself. Uh, you know, I'm really not a big fan of pocket pens. I don't own that many, and typically they don't appeal to me, but I really like the Shone Design Pocket 6. Uh, it has a lot going for it. Um, I love the shape and feel of this pen, even just holding it in my hand. Um, I love that it uses a number six nib so you don't feel like you're writing with a toy pen. And there's just an inherent cool factor about this pen. And as I mentioned at the top of this review, I did purchase it for myself and I have not regretted the purchase at all. It is a fantastic pen and I highly recommend picking one of these up while you can. So now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Shone Design Pocket 6. Uh, in regard to some other pocket pens, uh, here it is with a Quebeco Skyline Sport. Uh, here it is with a Pilot Stella 90S. Uh, here it is with a Twisby Mini. Uh, and then here it is with a Keras Customs Reactor. Then in regard to some non-pocket pens, uh, here it is with a Lamy 2000, and here it is with a Platinum 3776. Uh, and then just for comedy purposes, here it is with a Namiki Emperor. Quite the size difference there. What I also wanted to do was show the size comparison of when this pen was posted. So, to show when it's posted, here again we have the shown design. And then here it is with a Lamy All-Star. It's very similar in size to a Lamy All-Star. Uh, here it is with a Sailor Pro Gear. It's actually a little bit larger than the Pro Gear. Uh, and then here it is with a Mont Blanc 146. Uh, and so you can see it's even longer than a 146. So when it is posted, uh, it's plenty big enough to use. Okay, here we go with the writing sample for the shown design, and that's spelled just D-S-G-N, and this is the Pocket 6. This is a medium steel nib, uh, and the ink that I'm using is the cartridge that was provided to me when I purchased this, then purchased this pen, which is the Diamine. Purple Dream. Which is a nice purple. Uh, so, what I found here is that on this Bach nib, it performs very well. Uh, it's a standard Bach nib. Uh, you're not going to get tons of line variation out of here, uh, but it does flow nicely in regard to ink flow in regard to reverse writing. It performs well, and in regard to the writing sample, It's very nice. I find that the nib is tuned very nicely. In regard to some fast writing, there's no issues whatsoever. So there you have the Shone Design Pocket 6. Uh, that, as I mentioned before, pocket pens really aren't my thing, but I really love this pen. I think that uh, Ian has a, a hit on his hand uh, and that uh, these are gonna be popular for quite some time. So I encourage you to check out his site on the 20th to see what's available while it is. And once they sell out, and I do have a feeling they're gonna sell out, just look for new inventory in the future and uh, it will be well worth the investment. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. 
I wanted to begin today by sharing a little something with you. Uh, some folks have commented on my Rubik's Cube that's usually sitting behind me on my desk. You know, I've been playing around with those things ever since the uh, early 80s when they came out and that usually it's sitting back here solved, but today it's not. And I'm gonna do something about that. I want you to take a look at this cube. Uh, there's no patterns or large blocks of color, so you know it's thoroughly mixed up. And what I'm gonna do is I have an empty paper bag here, and I'm going to place the cube inside of the bag. And you can see it's still mixed up in there. And with the snap of my fingers, it's solved. You don't believe me? I I'll prove it. Hands empty. I want you to watch as slowly as possible. And this is one solved cube and one empty bag. 